Surround yourself with 
the joint and rock it. Here, beats be back. Others introduce melody, folks too high, bring it back. Be Earth's heartbeat. Or the mother is experimented with human beings, one of many who inherit the beats of Earth Mother, localizes back to her. Dance, dance, dance like some sex siren, sway with a particular thing in mind. Join or not, there's no sin here. Only your humanity. Love music, the one you're with. Mother is the drone. Beats, melody, are beats joining her. Sanctifying, electrifying, scratching, singing, rapping, poetic beats. Don't call it jazz. So much more, but limited in the jazz, uh, in the language of genres. All that jazz, play that jazz. Blues, piano, sax, make us nod our heads. Horn for topic, where black is beautiful color, indigo blue. Where we answer each other, ourselves, in musical languages. Teach us, let us speak in a new language. Dance, dance, dance in language. Hear your rhythms, feel it. Surround yourself with it. Rock it. Hear beats. Beat back. Beat back. Beat back. Yang had a shotgun arm, but was slower than a busted elevator. <laughs> he swung big lumber at the plate, then lumbered to the field. Alas, how that home crowd cringed when Tater took the grass. <laughs> Together they made the most entertaining outfield human eye had ever seen. The fans went for snacks when Beanville was up. It was magic time. <laughs> when they hit the green. <laughs> At the plate, Lou played with savvy and skill, but for a swell bunt, nobody swoons. No, it was Lou's larks in the field that turned quiet folk to howling loons. Every play, a disaster waiting. Batters who hit his way started celebrating. Sue covered more field than a retractable dome, but too far from Tater, she never could roam. A shallow pop to Lou, made the batter sing. It was like Lou's glove had some hidden spring. Line drives would leave Lou lying on his belly. Was his glove slick coated with petroleum jelly? But mostly what made folks hide their eyes was when Lou looked up at lofty pop flies. He would circle and circle and circle, seeking some perfect spot to tread. When at last that sphere returned to Earth, it would land right on Lou's head. <laughs> Finally, Lou threw his glove in the trash without recrimination, remorse, or regret. After that, he grabbed his hat when a ball came his way, and he waved it like a butterfly net. He'd catch a few, too, maybe one of every four a higher percentage than he'd ever fielded before. And for those pop flies, he finally got wise and took a batting helmet to the field. He'd stand under those descending balls on his pate a polypropylene shield. If a ball knocked his noggin, it would bounce back in the air. And then he'd brandish his cap, that intrusive missile to snare. 
why Lou became so good at the angles, he could bounce most flies to Sue. Give Sue an extra few seconds, and she always knew just what to do. Whenever the bats were ahead in the score, into the stands, Lou might bounce a ball. <coughs> he was kind-hearted like that and knew it was more fun for all. So how did Lou get the nickname Lucky? A scattershot of scornful irony? No, no. It was a happy reminder of the greatest play the world ever did see. One day Lou was circling, circling, trying to spy a pop fly overhead. He suddenly tripped over his own feet and went down like falling into bed. As he lay there stunned, the ball went splunk, as usual avoiding the ground. But this time it didn't find his head. It landed square on his buttock mound. In later years, the media he'd tease, saying he gave his cheeks a quick squeeze. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But that ball stayed glued right to that spot. The batter was out. Lou had saved the day. Shoulder high, his team carried him away. And today, the only thing Lou fields are queries. He's happy to, for with that catch, the Bats won the series. And Britt is our the mini feature of the evening, so uh, attention please. And then after that we have Ugin, and then Garen is after Britt. Okay. All this jazz, not past tense, all this jazz, please. Thousands of practitioners want to rile me, say jazz is dead. Greer's triplets or Dave's lyric parenthetical notes or a record collection so old that the cardboard falls away from the disc, most likely Caledonia. The harmony the armory of Kirk's horns, the fading light on Tristano's chiseled notes. They say that Count Basie was the nicest guy around and that Duke and Louie weren't. All this jazz contributing to the central melodies of our lives. There's some jazz in this poem. President's Follies. President, President's Follies on McAllister Street. Pony Poindexter in the pit. Fatigue oozed out from that theater. The tired girl in the box office. Tired lechers in the back rows. A tired drummer pushing a monotonous beat. A pretty girl's like a melody. Tired dancers, refugees from Busby Berkeley flicks, tired comedians with long red ties telling jokes about Bo Peep's sheep. Only a teen boy near the runway would have thought any of this was erotic or particularly funny. Candy Barr, who had an infectious giggle, and old Carmen, her spangled nipples, her fierce jungle eyes were there. They joined this nightly Ferlin, this nightly Fellini-esque parade in downtown San Francisco. But don't forget Pony Poindexter making a union wage in the pit, his sound raising from the pit. Super, superb alto man. Go, Pony, go. <laughs> Body and soul. The bell of the horn widens for this song. A distant river of longing moved by breath, experience, and heartache. They say that nobody knew the full dimensions of the tenor sax until Coleman Hawkins came back to the States and played Body and Soul 
wide river of longing beyond words and the flight of river birds when he really takes off full out flying away loose feathers in the wind luscious tones salt tears i gladly surrender body and soul the richness of the melody the rapt variations i'd gladly surrender full out not even a growl would break into that reverie tone flowing over and around words body and soul While Garrett's coming up here, I realized I was amiss when I was describing the prizes. We also have a few non-book prizes. For instance, the last Garrett. word. Garrett. 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 Okay. So uh, the last word is the person who starts and ends the second show. Choosing the theme or prompt. Uh, last week we had uh, who was it? Was was it Rob? No. Who, who who picked the last the theme for the Rob Rob Rubino. Rob Rubino. 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 Yeah. He picked uh, the theme. Uh, the keynote kicks off the evening. The mini feature we just saw gets eight minutes in the second half, and the co-pilots are people who help me here. And if you like being a timer, there's your chance to do it. So anyway, so give him a nice round as he's here now. A wonderful voice, a wonderful voice. Uh, this first piece is what I'm afraid, afraid and outdated as soon as it was, as soon as it was done, even though it's new. It's, already a bit outdated. Uh -huh. Going to blazes. The entire structure is engulfed in a blazing inferno, allegedly set by some arsonists with a most peculiar hairstyle. The carnage is a horrific sight to behold. The spectators can only sadly pray can somehow be saved. Here come some swatters on firefighters to save the day. They take aim at the blazing inferno, yet their arsenal consists of tiny squirt guns. Confronted by the outraged why, they retort as timidly as can be, but there are buildings standing adjacent to the place. We were afraid we might splash them in the process. But then came yet one more firefighter, this one ready to go unloaded with heavy arsenal. The first set of would be firefighters start to protest, but the new one takes aim with a huge set of hoses, turns on the water, and out comes a mini tsunami in all directions. In a surprisingly brief time, that fire was good as doused, and to go along with it, so was the alleged arsonist. Needless to say, the spectators were ecstatic. Now we can begin to rebuild what that fool newly destroyed, and our beloved structure will be better than ever, not just as it once was. Cut and print. Beautiful, baby, beautiful. You can all take your bows. Joe, Pete, Amy, and Mikey, not the liker of life, as the SWAT is not firefighters. Middle America, or so the SWAT is not firefighters claim, as the adjacent buildings they were so afraid to splatter, our man Bernard as a one more firefighter in America herself at the structure set ablaze. Oops, so sorry, we did try to forget the chump as the alleged arsonist. This has been going to blazes, a cautionary and alleged American tale about the 2020 election. Cautionary. Oh, and a sad song for Orphan Dan. Somebody known as Ann Kirkpatrick found herself thrown out as chief of Oakland police, goes running to cop protective services, a.k.a. the courts, to alternate between crocodile tears and petty vindictiveness. Wants emancipation from Daddy Warshaw, who apparently just spanked her through the Oakland Police Commission. And she's got two more spankies, Howard Jordan and Sean Wynn, coming to her side against the big bad regulators. But before we pull out more than the tiniest of violence, let us make this query. Didn't anyone bother to tell poor Ann that it's really not polite to promote police officers who pull statutory rape on minor children like the one known as Celeste Quap? Just asking. Just asking. Luke? Luke? Have you been here before? I have not. No, oh, this I'm is right. a newbie! <laughs> I'm only here till Sunday. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and also it's luck, but you know, it doesn't matter. Just here till Sunday. Uh, all right, so I was gonna read this poem. I usually, I usually like write in voices, and this one was like from the perspective of like an old man. 
<laughs> and it's just, I'm not gonna do it. It's just, it's oh, just. Oh, yeah. 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 It's in the voice. Oh, yeah. and, uh, I, I have an, I have others. I have others. Oh, yeah, it would just, it would just be too <laughs> weird. It, it would be too weird. Um, how much time do I have? One poem? Uh, you have four minutes. So okay. You'll, the timer will. You'll hear the beeper going. That means you got to... Uh, All right. Then I'll warm up with a someone else's words. This is Pushkin. This is my translation of the angel. All right. Um, at Eden's door stood a tranquil angel, her head bowed, shining down, while a storm-troubled demon flew above the abyss, circling, circling slowly around and around. That core of doubt, that main of negation, drifted into the blaze of her light. He was caught by a warming, a heat, a confusion. For the first time, he lessened in spite. Farewell, he cried. You're not shining for nothing. Your goodness beheld unfurled. I hate not the whole of the realm high above, nor all, nor disdained all I've seen in this world. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. All right. Uh, all right. And so I write these ones called sketches. I called them that before I knew that Kerouac did them, and I, uh, okay. so I got to rename them, I guess. Uh -huh. Nothing against Kerouac, I just, you know, his writing's just not good. Uh, all right, uh, so this one's called Performers. All arts are at least slightly necromantic, but none more so than, but none more so than classical performance. Perfection is of singular importance, what stinks, the badly taxidermed romantic. But corpses are what's trot out by the student, the runs too rigid, pitch too high or low, the poor boy's trapped because some years ago, his parents reckoned cello lessons prudent. Applause and tired bow, here comes a girl, just one more dance turn dirge, we brace our ears. But what she pipes and winds back through the ears in clod, whilst from her flute and does a twirl. She wins the trip to Moscow, she declines. Her father's ill, mom's overworked, and there are little wrists to drag to school. All right. Thank you. Enzo. 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 You've been here before. Yeah, I think I have. Oh yeah. All right. So Enzo. Enzo. Oh, oh, never mind. Oh, we're trying to not. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, 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 well, since it's jazz night, you can, jazz night. you can call me Enzo Monk. Uh, before me and uh, Robbie get down, I wanted to read a poem for a, mo for a man that spoke jazz by the name of Bob Kaufman. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this is a poem called, no, this is mine, it's just for him. Oh, well, I'm going to put, put down that you mentioned it. Oh, okay. Ah. Saxman. Pill bottle body known as Saxman. Sings no tunes, but charges a mission anyway. Let that thing wail, how's the herd? I ain't no whaler, and my name sure ain't Bob. They applaud for this, throwing nickels on stage. Here's some bus fare, mon fair. I ain't French unless you talk in toast. I ain't taking names, nor do I boast. The sax cometh, and I follow lead on the steed of serenade. Find me at the opera, or in the broom closet of an alleyway. Frisky whiskey, and a pack of blonde on blonde, my teacher. Old English, and orange sliced lovers, my reaper. Play me something, sax man. I've never missed a beat. Invest in Q-tips, brother. Invest in Q-tips. Yeah. All right, this is called The Gal Who Bought the World. All right. There was this gal. She bought the world. We'll call her God or Mama Earth. My son, do not fear the hearse. With, com with completion comes rebirth. If it hurts, that's okay. Allow the ship to sail away. May my final days be spent in Frisco. I ain't a kid, don't call me Cisco. Let's bust the move like there's something to lose. Panic at this disco. My lips are in limbo. Can you lend yours, Cancer Moon? She snatched my core. Can't see the door. Lead me to the exit. The times are rather hectic. Snooze the news, tie your shoes. Be careful of the drugs you choose. Most friends dissolve in the end. All these minute men in pursuit of desire. Hope my sins will soon expire and I can catch the fire. Used to be her secondhand liar or storefront sire. No more mountains to ascend or fuse with Uncle Ben. 
Hundreds of reasons to flow with the seasons. My mind more angel than demon. No time is ever a good time for leaving. Roll the tides in reverse. People be purged, wondering if it hurts. God is my nurse, so God is my curse. God is my nurse, God is my curse. All the dominoes descend, I will soon follow them. One with the ocean, stars in my potion. Leave me with the notion. It's a crisis when I left my vices. She kisses my eyelids with her tongue painted violet. Her fetish is violence. Told me the dream was all but done. No waiting on anyone. No waiting on anyone. By equal, do you mean the portions of packaged people? When's the sequel, trouble man? When's my chance at this puzzle piece land? I'm no help, governor took my hands. Said I can't be having inspiration, being public information. Executioners run the nation, pull the switch from a final trick. Lights out brings a standing ovation. But at least my caddy still has them datings. No way in on anyone, no waiting on anyone. Self is the only idol, scripture is my revival. Commune with the land, my roots are all tribal. Motion is my means of survival. Self is the only idol. Is coming up, but oh, someone has this glove here. Rob, is it serious? Oh, yeah, that's the microphone sanitation club. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, something that he mentioned reminded me of this terrible old joke, and I can't stand it when I have a joke like this, so it goes like this. Okay, ready, ready now. What is white and crawls up your leg? Just say so you don't know. What is it, Dan? <laughs> Uncle Ben's perverted rice. Oh, that is bad. That is bad. <laughs> can, I have my, can I have my moment back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now Frank Scott Scott Fish is going to rescue the yeah. 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 Uncle Ben's convert rice. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. We got it. Yeah, I know you can. Go away. Go away. Stop that, please. Put it to bed. Put it to bed. No, this is not. This is good. I don't know. I want. I want perfect. Oh, yeah, that is good. Perfect latitude can't have it. There you go. All right. Sharon Scott Kish. And you're always trying to say something Scottish, but you know they can tell if you're from Scotland if you can say it's a brabrick moonlick nick to nick. Said. And that one. You had me at Sobrotnik. Thank you. <laughs> it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Yeah, Duke Ellington. Yeah, Music is my mistress, and she plays second fiddle to none. Right. Nice. Nap time. <laughs> First day of kindergarten, new. Now that's a big day. Some kids are really anxious. New clothes, new friends. Old friends, well, some have to be left behind. Friends like teddy bears, dolls, no BB guns, no water pistols, no roller skates, no scooters, and no radio flyers. Just new thermos, lunch boxes, pencil boxes, water co watercolor sets, mothers. Oh yeah, the mothers. Some are so sad their babies are leaving, and the others are dancing, dancing up and down the hall. Nobody underfoot. Thank God it's all over, and they're away for a few hours. This is time for a relief. No noise boxes. Older children, mm, they dread it, because that means they have a tag along. Teachers, especially the new ones, are excited. Time to prove themselves. Older teachers dig in their heels, and wait for the new little bastards. <laughs> they show up. Got the teachers have to dust off their work. Why dust off the workbook? Some teachers have it have it down. They never change the curriculum. They haven't changed the curriculum in twenty years. But they too check their work clothes. New heels on their heels. Sensible shoes, sturdy shoes, shoes that tie up, shoes that have straps. They have their wristwatches serviced. Some make sure that their whistles work. Parents line up at school, the school board with birth certificates, vaccination proofs, 
Children are sat down and explain the whole process. Many are drilled on addresses, phone numbers, and of course there are the drills, which is to which corner to go to and their walk to school, which bus they're to take, which corner to wait for the school bus. Some are walked to school many times because unlike Charlie, who gets it the first time, there are few, like Edward, has to be walked four times. He still doesn't get it. Mom has to take him the first day. If they're lucky, their teacher's name will be given to them in advance. Some already know their teachers, especially if the older, older brothers and sisters have gone to that school before them. And, the teacher, and sometimes the teacher's a neighbor or family friend. If not the first top, stop the principal's office to be assigned to the room. It's not too hard to find usually. The kindergarten is always the largest room on the first floor and the noisiest. Laughing, some are crying, some are screaming. Mm -hmm. The sound of metal chairs scraping on the newly waxed floors. The big brass bell placed on the desk and the teacher boldly name, name written on the blackboard. One teacher, Mrs. Gaines, tapes the names of all the children to their chairs. She's not going to miss it. She's been doing this for 40 years. All children in her class are arranged in alphabetical order, just in case. She has a seating chart also. Only way to get around it, this drill is to be a twin and, and switch seats, just to confuse her. That gets you sent to the office. The bus driver, boy, he loves his job and he is ready. He's got his new khakis, his new shirt, his new tie, and his new hat that he got from the cab stand. It's got his name on the top. A list of all the children and their addresses. Mr. Harley has always spent the days pressing his uniform and his shoes. He's got new taps on his shoes. Now, new thermos, new, pan for his, new pen for his suit. He makes several trips to the gas station for a check so that the bus is working tip-top ladybird. After the morning rush in the principal's office, assigned kids settle in. Everyone has, to, everyone has to stand up and recite their name and spell it. Mrs. Gaines makes them spell their name, and if you can't do it, it's to the corner in the back of the room with your face to the wall. Your assignment and a note will be sent home with you to spell your name out and sent to your parents. 10 o'clock, time for a nap. All have been instructed to bring a small rug to take a nap on. Really? Really. How can you sleep? Too much going on. But before, before the cook, Arthur, has gone, come to school at 6 o'clock to set out the milk and graham crackers. Oh boy. Milk and two graham crackers. Nabisco graham crackers. Okay, and a small carton of Borden's milk. He sets the milk out in the cafeteria, because he's there at 6.30, in the window by the radiator. Time to deliver up, he takes one to each room and sets them on the radiator. Sets the carton down, and then it's time for the teacher to hand the thin paper straws to milk and crackers. First strip of the saw straws, they collapse. Okay, now for the milk. One sip, two sips, Ugh, the milk has started to sour. That does not work well. So they lay on the floor and they try to sleep. All, cre all kids agree on the first day of school, they're snacked and they're soured on school. Mm. Yeah. Woo! Good job, kids. Procedural, appreciation. observe the procedural, you know, never mind, I gotta stop. Is it still like Something four minutes? It's yeah, been yeah, so yeah. long. It's better that, it's either that or we read poetry through masks. <laughs> oh, that'd be <laughs> strange. Poetry with masks? Alright. Um, yeah, you're right. My ears need to be cleaned. Yeah, it's been like, damn, probably three months since I've been here. Yeah, I know, it's been yeah. a while. Okay. Good to see you guys. <laughs> so, my first one. Um, white noise and 
TV static, black fade to motion picture movie. Dad mans the camera. Daughter holds a knife for her peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Son in mama's arms. Better days when life ain't had no chance to be traumatic. White noise and TV static. Black fade to being tickled by uncle. Feet flailing in panic. Run to mama's arms. Better days. Even fear was less dramatic. White noise and TV static. Black fade to big boy. A smile brighter than his light up sneakers. He's done with mama's arms. Better days when emotions weren't ocean erratic. White noise and TV static. Black fade to black fade. Black. Thank you. That's my friends. There's a lot of shit going on in the world. We all know that's the that's the proof. Um, but you know, I've been, I got a job. I've been caught up in bullshit. Um, so here's how I've been feeling. It's my like state of the human address for 2020, bro. So here we go. Time bound tight, constricted like skinny jeans. Work a job again is. 12 an hour, all that time is worth. Man does dirty things when he's desperate. My spine hurts. Eyelids too heavy from working till close. I peel off my clothes and can cocoon myself in comforter. I leave my work right where I left it the last day, the same way it was the last year. A songless singer, what's the worth of my time on earth? It used to be an ego quest to see myself on stages, but sometimes spectacular seems sapping. I used to want to be the whole scene, but I don't think I mind becoming the background. Mm. Thank you. I really didn't even need to touch the mic to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, right. Just in case. It's an initiation. <laughs> so this is about like talking to someone via the internet. <laughs> all right. All right. Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. There must be something wrong here to hear your voice so gently in my ear. My eyes tracing your vivid features and heart racing like some fearful creature. Is our love not the same? When you're gone, don't I pain? Like pistols, these pixels pierce through my affection. Cause what I see is not your face, but instead a digital reflection. Copper, silicon, and then I'm feeling wrong cause I fell in love with some incomplete package and foolishly strapped myself in for some emotional baggage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So earlier today I was feeling really shitty and like I was smoking a cigarette and that, sh that didn't help at all. But anyways, feeling like shit, this nicotine stick don't hit no more. Smoking the same new part that dad used to Telling myself it's for him as addiction pulls me in and I'm confusing momentary movement for progress. Not noticing the steps I'm taking backwards cause I lack words to ask my own family for help. I've ostracized myself alone as the kelp in the ocean. My own emotions gone frozen in search of stoicism. Woo. Last one I've read it before, but I found it today after I like hadn't seen it for hella long. So yeah, it's called Go to Sleep. It's strange to sleep beside you, waking up within a centimeter of your pulsing soft plush pink. Cause eyes closed without consciousness, you speak to me in a soft lull, pull me into that place between being, knowing, 
and with a contagious sedation drape over me a noir nothingness before tomorrow's next act. I ask myself, do I dare break this beautiful moment to join you in that blanket of darkness? Because as my eyes adjust to this low light, I stare and stare and stare to spite those doubts that everything won't be all right. How could I face that fear of you not being here when your face is against mine and it's all my mind can take in? How could I prepare for a time after you with my mind after you as it plasters your pictures across every inch of every corner of my brain? How will I deal with the time when it isn't the same as when you first entered my eyes and I wrote that first rhyme? I want to shake you, tell me please that it will be all right. Postpone the torture of this insecure night. But I know it's best I just let her sleep tight and take in this night like a moment made of glass and wear my worries like a beautiful sash and treasure that I love you like this moment's our last. This is his first time here, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he wants to know your name. What's your name, sir? Axel. Axel. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I thought this was a stand-up uh, open mic. So. Everything. Yeah. Everything, Mr. Red. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds good. Um, we were made in a way for you. Go ahead. Um, so if you pardon me, I would like to try to tell some bad jokes. <laughs> um, I want to start by saying, fuck Mexicans. Uh, we've been getting a pretty bad rap for the past few years, so if you get the chance, please fuck Mexicans. Uh, my name is Axel. It's like Alex, but unnecessarily more shittier. Uh, my full name is Axel Toes. It's like Axel Rose, but necessarily shittier. Um, it's my first time doing this, so I might finish sooner than you expect. <laughs> if you're not satisfied by the end, please at least fake it. My, te <laughs> my therapist says it might help with my mental health. Um, actually, it's my second time doing this, um, which is also what I said to the second to the girl who took my second virginity. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm so nervous I can hear my heart. Um, can you guys hear it? No? It's fine, neither did my ex. Uh, did you guys watch the new Joker movie? No? Anybody? No? I was worried that I would be so awkward here and do one of those uh, new Joker performances. Um, I love that movie, Joaquin Phoenix. What a legend. If I ever have a son, I'm gonna name him after the, the actor, Joaquin but with an F at the beginning, so it'll be easier to discipline. <laughs> Fucking go to your room. Fucking pick up your toys. Um, I shaved my beard last Sunday. Um, I heard that if you shave it, it'll grow, it'll come back thicker and stronger. I can't wait, I can't wait till my penis grows back. <laughs> Um, I'll just leave it at that, I'll, and I would like to finish with a poem that has influenced my most of my adult life. Um, it, it goes, um, I do not suffer from insanity, I enjoy every minute of it. Edgar Allan Poe. Thank you, Edgar. Yeah. Care of these door prizes. It's Bob easy. Dylan didn't make it. No. So, you know. Well, sort of. Well, we'll we'll do do next week. Week. Next week. Yeah, next week. Talk to Bob Dylan.
Or it's going to be Alan Watson next week. Uh, no, 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 he's Bob, drunk. Bob, Bob, Alan's drunk. Bob, he can't make it. Oh, sugar. Yeah. Wait, like, I didn't say shit, see? <laughs> You're the last one on the mic. You can touch it whatever you like. Touch it, baby. <laughs> Ooh. I like the It's a new dance. <laughs> All right, um, um, uh, I got one here from three years ago, and uh, uh, I want to read it. Called Jaguar Walks. Jaguar Walks Night. Wind blows through jungle warning sounds as howler monkeys howl, as those who sing hoo-hoo, hoo-hoo on top. Choirs of birds, animal sound warnings. Jaguar is passing by, feminine giver, taker of life. Jaguar displays her beautiful color coat of yellows, brown spots, walks regally, protector, guardian of the night. Chorus of sounds persist as she casually strolls. She rules, has no one to fear this night. No human borders needed to be crossed or fires set to run from. With stomach full from recent kills, she enjoys her walk through her domain, always on the lookout for game to pounce or waterways to swim. Jaguar walks. Yeah. I really don't have any heroes, but I have people that I really, really look up to, and John Trudell was one of those, and I unfortunately don't think I ever have enough words or a way of expressing my gratitude for what he brought to life, uh, but here's one of them. It's a quote. John Trudell said, we can't outfight them. There may be a time to fight, but we can't outfight them because they invented that kind of death through history. Since they invented that kind of death, every provocation has to do is to get us at some point to outfight them. So to me, in reality, we've got to outthink them. We're surrounded in reality when you have to ask for permission to think. It's called the chain of command. They don't have to ask for permission to think. See, only a few get to, see, to do this. And you see, it's about people lying about numbers. So if you see, if you really think about it, the guerrilla warrior of the future is going to be the one who thinks. <laughs> so, my thing to John is, he who thinks is the most dangerous. There they go, the thinkers. Who are they thinking for? We are all whores in USA unless you're sisters of mercies. John is right, came as close as he could to remain human as a man being can get. He did what he spoke, trying to be a human in a humane world, using all his intelligence, expanding his humanity to the trickster. Can we expect anything less from, uh, from us or from ourselves? He's a thinker. One who spoke eloquently became the most dangerous in empire, where FBI had the largest file. Hallelujah to the wolf coyote trickster. Stand, the thinker is walking through. Thank you. All right, so you may know that when you came in, you signed in with a number. You'll notice these cards have numbers. Mm -hmm. I have been shuffling them obsessively, compulsively, like to say, handing them to my co-host who's going to cut one.